Welcome to Cooking with Grandma Henry. At this time, we're going to invite the Lord's presence. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us. Be with us as we enter into cooking. May we learn how to eat healthfully so that we can bring glory and honor to your name. Amen. 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 Today, we are working on a wonderful recipe called Rasta Pasta. And for those who are not familiar, Rasta is a short form, short form of the word Rastafarian, which is a religion in the island of Jamaica. And a chef was cooking for a construction crew and just happened to throw together a whole bunch of colored peppers and um, and a particular pasta, and they said all those colors are the colors of the Rasta flag, and the ribbons of the pasta look like they're dreads, and so the name Rasta pasta was coined. Today, we are going to make Rasta pasta with jerk tofu. Now, Sister Henry has so wonderfully prepared the ingredients for us in advance. This tofu has been marinated in a number of seasonings. And uh, I will let Flora tell you the seasonings that have been used. And I'll just touch a little on what the beneficial properties of those ingredients are. In the tofu, we have two tablespoons of mild jerk seasoning, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, and one pound of firm tofu. And again, that has been marinated overnight, overnight and it's ready to go. So we are going to do uh, a searing on the stove. Can we check and see if the stove is on so that we can... So we are going to sear the tofu on top of the stove first, and then we will put it in the oven for 20 minutes to cook. Now tofu is uh, originated in China, and it's made of condensed soy milk, which is full of a lot of protein um, and fat, but it's good fat. It contains a lot of um, isoflavonoids, which is the ingredient that gives it the, the most beneficial properties for us. It can possibly help protect against diabetes and um, improve mineral bone density. It's safe for most people, but if you have some health concerns, you might consult with your dietitian or doctor. And the jerk seasoning I found interesting. The, um, that came about when African slaves on the plantations in Jamaica had to fend for themselves. So in the mountains, they found these berries called pimentos, which the white man called allspice. And so they had to use what they found to season their food. And that was the beginning of the jerk seasoning blend, which has now been used all across the world in many different company, uh, countries. Yeah, and Claudine, before you continue, one nice thing about tofu when you seasoning it, it takes on the flavor of the seasoning. Tofu can taste like anything. If you taste it plain, you're probably not going to like it. But once you season it, you can get it to taste like beef, chicken, jerk. It, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> now, it's wonderful for most people. Um, I know for me personally, um, I have a reaction to it. So I have to be careful. I could not eat this tofu that we're making today. Um, in some, th if it's blended in certain products, I can, I can eat it. But there you go, we're all different, so. And as Claudine, I have a reaction to it, but mine is much milder, so I can eat that. There you but go. But I can't eat the raw bean. The, the soybean? The endami, the soybean. Edamame. I, edamame, I cannot eat that. There you go. Just, and some, some of the, um, the the, co the concerns that I've heard about it is it could be how the soybean is processed. 
And that may be what we're reacting to is the processing, the process. not the actual I ingredient. But if you don't know, stay away. Oh. oh, that was all? Okay, awesome. Into the oven we go for 20 minutes. And while that's in there, we're going to uh, cook our pasta. Um, and Flora, what kind of pasta are we using today? It's made from chickpeas. And we have found it's a gluten-free pasta. Again, I have... I'm sensitive to gluten, so I don't eat regular pasta. I don't eat the wheat, the barley, and the rye. And we have found that a chickpea pasta, gluten-free, holds up better than some of the others. I have tried corn and rice, and while they taste really good, if you cook them just a little bit too long, they're mushy, and they just don't have the texture that you want when you're eating. But from chickpeas, the texture holds. Now I have found with the, um, with the onset of new um, types of health foods that the high protein pastas tend to be very chewy. So they can, you know, they give you mouth a workout. <laughs> Not, they're beneficial for your health, but and also for your jaw, your muscles. Um, and so you may not have to use as much pasta as you would you, the other non-high protein pastas in your meals. Um, and chickpea is a high protein, correct? Yes. There is a very um, small t window of time to cook the, these pastas to their optimum um, measure. So we also, one of the ingredients that we're going to be using in the pasta is cashew cream. And this has, we've already actually pre-made it, but Flora, can you tell us what the ingredients are? Two cups of raw cashew, and the cashews have been soaked overnight. And that makes them, when, when you process a cashew that's been soaked overnight, it blends very smoothly. That, that's one of the benefits of soaking overnight. One, and it's in one cup of water. Then we have one heaping tablespoon of nutritional yeast flakes. And nutritional yeast flakes. I'm sorry, what was the question? What's the point of nutritional yeast flakes? Well, it gives it a, a cheesy flavor, but more than that, um, well, that's it. That's basically it. <laughs> nutrition. You have protein, vitamin B, and it's an excellent source of thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, folic acid, vitamins B6 and B12. So what are we using it's, that to replace? That is doing, that, that it's replacing you, in a regular? It, it's not the nutritional yeast that you would replace. It's the whole cheese sauce. You would use a different cheese sauce. Okay. So you wouldn't bother with the cashews and nutritional yeast and so the, the, cheesy flavor. the lemon juice. It's yes. the cheesy flavor. Yeah. So it's a mm -hmm. vegan alternative to, uh, to cheese. traditional cheeses. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh -huh. it's, um, it is very much uh, uh, beneficial in that it also is a complete protein. So it provides all of the, uh, the amino acids the body needs, which is something that not, not many products will, will do for you. So if you're going to substitute healthy things, this is one of the healthy things that... Well, uh, well meat may give you a complete protein. All of your legumes and things don't give you a complete protein. You need a grain along with it, where here you have a complete protein. As with quinoa, you have a complete, complete. protein. We also have a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice in our cashew, cashew cheese. Cream. Cashew cream. One of the things about cashews that I was uh, learning is that it is, has a high magnesium content. And so some studies have shown that if you eat a, a regular amount, of a small amount of cashews every day, it can help to reduce the bad cholesterol in your system because of that high magnesium content. Now, again, I have to be careful with cashews because I have a history of kidney stones. So certain, certain nuts... Um, can contribute to kidney stones developing. 
So again, everybody is different, so you do what works for you. But when you are making a cream and having it as part of a broader meal, you're not getting a lot of the individual cashew. So this is going to be one part. And now what else will go in our pasta? Okay, in our pasta, did we say the two tablespoons of olive oil? All right, so we're going to get, we're going to actually start doing, doing that now while our pasta is cooking. One pound of pasta, three bell peppers, yellow, red, and green, thinly sliced, and that has already interesting been prepared. It's just twisting. And it, it adds that. color. It's it's and flavor. It it she tastes. She has a reading on on these peppers. I will let Flora do that. Let's oh, there we go. There you go. You can put. Them. You're going to tell us something about the peppers, Claudine? The beautiful thing about peppers, I was amazed, actually, as I started to read this, started to research this, I should say, that, uh, and actually, even the olive oil that we're using now is loaded with antioxidants, and um, they help to flight, fight inflammation in the body, and... It does not appear that olive oil contributes to weight gain. You know, there's, there's talk of if you use too much oil, then you're going to gain weight. Not necessarily. Some are, studies even suggest that it can help with things like Alzheimer's. So that's, that's a, a plus of the olive oil. Now, peppers are actually fruit. They're not vegetable. <laughs> They're actually fruit that belong to the nightshade family. Yes. And... They are related to tomatoes and breadfruit, which is central to the Caribbean. And um, they're mainly made up of water and carbs. And carbs are sugars. Uh, they also contain a decent amount of fiber. And they're very high in vitamin C and vitamin B6. Um, eaten in moderation, there should be no negative side effects for, for eating the peppers. And they contain many beneficial ingredients. So load up the peppers in your food. Now Claudine mentioned nightshades. There are four fruits and vegetables in the nightshade family that can cause inflammation in your body. It's not a proven study. It was done randomly, not scientifically, but I gave them up for about six months to a year. White white potatoes, peppers, everything but black pepper that's in the nightshade family, eggplant, and tomatoes. Tomatoes. I gave them up because I have arthritis, and my back was killing me. And after I gave them up, in less than a week, I wasn't suffering that pain. Now, I love those things. So I introduced them back into my diet, don't eat them all at the same time, and I'm okay, but it's something to consider. To consider, absolutely. Nightshades. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We also have green onions Ooh. cut up. And I don't know if you can see that little pepper sitting in there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, th I, think, I think we should highlight that Grandma, little. Grandma loves to stick peppers in her food. This is a scotch bonnet pepper. And it adds a, <laughs> it adds a lot of flavor. Yeah. So but the recipe calls for this, this little gem to be pierced. We are not piercing it today. <laughs> um, it has a very high um, heat content. <laughs> on, um, actually, that has a heat rating of between 100 and 350,000 Scoville units. That's that meat heat measure. For comparison, most jalapeno peppers have a heat rating of 2,500 to 8,000 Scovilles. So from 8,000 to 350,000 is a significant heat difference. Yes. I don't even like to look at that. Yeah. But it's heat. the people who, who like Scotch bonnets will tell you it has a very unique flavor and they love the flavor. So they are willing to uh, sacrifice the heat for it. And the flavor does still come through. Probably not as strong, 
But it does come but through. But it'll come through. As does a little heat. Awesome. All right. It's sitting there gives out enough heat. Yeah, I heat think so. We are All also right. adding one clove of gar minced garlic. Garlic has a very long history of health benefits for the human family. Um, it, researchers believe it can have a positive impact on your blood pressure. Uh, its antibacterial and antioxidant properties can help clear up uh, your skin if you have acne. Um, granted, it can burn <laughs> if you were to put it directly <laughs> on your skin, so you want to be careful. It also fights fungus. So even if you had um, a uh, like athlete's foot, they said you could soak your foot in uh, a bath with garlic, and that would that would help. Research oil shows that garlic um, research shows that garlic oil works as an anti-inflammatory. So sore muscles, you could actually rub that on. Now you'd want to be careful going in public, <laughs> running uh, if you were to do that. Um, <laughs> but it is, uh, it's helpful to uh, have a diet rich in fruits and vegetables and garlic. Studies shown that it can reduce your colon cancer risk. And I actually had a colonoscopy recently. I was very thankful that all was, all was clear. But as I'm getting older now, yes. I think it's, it's more important to be careful about what we're eating because we're no longer young and spry and able to bounce back as quickly. <laughs> so uh, more important to take in the good things for us. So, so garlic is good for your body, but not necessarily for your social life. Uh, okay. Could be hazardous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We also have a fourth of a cup of mild jerk seasoning. And Claudine already told us about the jerk seasoning. Oh, that's the hot one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's hot... Hey. How much? There's a quarter cup, and that's a quarter, a quarter of cup. a cup. We have both hot and mild, and the mild is warm enough for me. So praise the Lord. So just once enough. again, right. Sister Hazel is using the mild. We didn't want to open up the hot one. We have two fresh thyme sprigs that will be added. Now thyme is a very um, interesting herb it is from the mint family it can be used fresh or dried or made into essential oil and it contains the compound thymol which can help to control or neutralize some bacterial or fungal um, activity so uh, some individuals with rheumatoid arthritis use thyme either either as a tea or topically to relieve symptoms it has been used for, uh, as a home remedy for coughs and respiratory conditions. So it's wonderful. Actually, I um, have a affiliation with a company that they, they prepared a disinfectant solution and its primary active ingredient is thyme oil. So, you know, it's, it's wonderful to know that just throwing a couple of sprigs of thyme mm -hmm. into a, a meal can help. Awesome. And we're now going to add the one fourth cup of cashew cream. That we have the ingredients for, but we didn't demonstrate exactly how it was create, um, made today. But it's blend, a blend of all of these. Beautiful. And then next. We did this already in previous Yes, we did, uh, we did demonstrate the preparing the cashew cream in a previous episode. So. Check back. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. And we have one fourth cup of vegetable broth. I thought she was, um, so now we, our tofu is done. We are adding it to our pot with the um, pasta and peppers. We added, I believe, a quarter cup of vegan mozzarella. Could be vegan uh, Parmesan, um, either one will work. And it's a beautiful blend of colors here that I can see. It looks wonderful. And it tastes even better. It's <laughs> I will leave the tasting for others today. 
But if you attended church on March the 26th, you had the opportunity to taste this. Yes. That's right. We have begun giving samples of, in advance of our cooking class to those who are attending church on certain Sabbaths. We won't say which ones. You have to come every week to be able to get possibly a sample of our next recipe. Awesome. So our Rasta Pasta is done. We thank you so much for joining us today and pray for God's blessings on you for happy and healthy days. God bless.